Hello. Okay. Uh, welcome. We are in week 11. And as you can see from my background, let me move my hair a little. I don't know. Okay. But anyways. And of course, from the title of this unit, we are, it's going to be technology. Um, yeah, this is week 11. And uh, before we begin with technology, the TED Talk, uh, I just wanna say a couple of things about your final pre uh, presentations. Okay. I'm hoping that because we are now in week 11, that uh, your groups, that you know, that the groups that you have, that we have, I hope that you guys are slowly working out what you're going to be talking about. Uh, I'm sure some groups already know exactly what they're going to talk about. And I'm just ho uh, hoping that you have an idea about what you're going to do and that you are at least beginning to think about what you're going to say and who's going to say what. And don't forget, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, but yet, yeah, for any groups that still aren't sure about what to do for the final presentation, I hope that the videos that were already shown that you already saw and this one, I hope that you're getting some ideas if you're going to do something from the book. So I hope, yeah. So during this video, maybe you'll get, you'll see something and you'll think, yeah, okay, maybe our group can do that. I don't know, but let's start with technology TED Talk. Of course, we're gonna start with reading, just a small thing. As you can see on page 70. So as you guys get to page 70, let me show you what it should look like. It should look like this. We are not going to work with a partner because, well, we're online. So you can't work with a partner but we're going to read. Um, so what I want you guys to do is uh, get on page 70 and begin or well, prepare to read along as you listen to the audio. Okay, so here we go. The man stands at the open door of a helicopter around 2,000 meters above the ground. On his back is a jet-powered wing. He starts his four engines and then jumps from the helicopter, diving toward the ground at great speed. The man arches his back to stop the dive, and now he's flying. This is not a scene from an action movie. It's just another day for the jet man. Eve Rossi. I really have the feeling of being a bird, says Rossi. He has little equipment and no controls to help steer the wing. He changes his direction simply by moving his body. It's really pure flying. It's not steering, it's flight. He only has two instruments, one to tell him the current height and another to tell him how much fuel he has. It's a different world from Rossi's previous career as an airline pilot, but safety is still important. If something goes wrong, Rossi has two parachutes for himself and another for his wing. If one engine stops, he can continue on three or even two. So plan B, always a plan B explains Rossi. After just less than 10 minutes, the fuel is almost empty. Rossi opens his parachute and he begins to fall gently to the ground. Another successful flight is complete. In the future, 
Rossi hopes to make this kind of flight safer. And as he says, I hope it will be for everybody. All right. And of course, uh, on the bottom here, and just in case anybody doesn't know, it, the company or the, uh, yeah, the company that made the book or the writers, uh, they wanted to make sure that everybody understood the word arch and instrument. All right, so take a look at the words in blue because they're going to come up later. Not next, but they're, they are going to be coming up later. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on those words and we are now going to move into process. You know, first this, then this, but all you have to do is write a number. And here it is. All right, look at the diagram and number the sentences below one to four. They're not in order. So, uh, which one is first, which one is second, and so on. Uh, and of course, you have as much time as you need. So, pause your video now. All right, that's enough time, I think. Uh, yeah, you have unpaused the video and you are ready to check your answers. So let's check your answers in. All right, so the, um, you know, you know, images, sorry. The images are showing you what he's doing but you have to look at the text. So one, he stands at the door of a helicopter or an airplane and starts his engine. Then he jumps and dives toward the ground. After that, he arches his back to stop the dive and starts to fly. Finally, he opens his parachute and lands safely on the ground. Okay. So um, it should be three, one, four, two, like that. All right, I'll just leave this up for maybe five seconds in case you want to double check. All right, and let's move on to page 72. All right, now we're going to get into the uh, talk. So what I'm going to do is, before I even talk about the page, I'm going to turn off my video, and then I'll continue. All right, you should be able to still hear me. So, uh, Fly with the Jetman. Eve Rossi's idea worth spreading is that by integrating uh, putting them, or how can I say this, combining our bodies with new technology, we can experience the thrill of pure flying. In his unique aircraft, he can climb to an altitude of several thousand meters. He can also go fast at one third the speed of a passenger plane. All right, so. But now take a look at the words in bold, aircraft, climb, altitude, speed, uh, and match the words with its meaning. Uh, don't worry about watching part one. I have the whole page in one slide, but you only have to do A. That's all you have to do. So for A, Pause the video for as long as you need now. Oh, and there's your pause button. All right, we're going to now check your answers. 
because, well, if you're listening to this, it means that you are ready to check your answers. So we will do that in. All right, and like I said, only A. So the words were aircraft, climb, altitude, and speed. So the meaning is how fast something moves. So how fast something moves, that is speed. Planes, helicopters, etc. Aircraft, height, that would be altitude and move upward, climb. And I'll leave this up for maybe five seconds, I guess. And yeah, you can uh, double check your answers. Or well, it's going to be speed, aircraft, altitude, and climb. All right, and the reason I turned Zoom off or the video for, uh, on Zoom is because of what's happening next. And that is, uh, we are going to watch part one of the TED Talk and what happens when Rossi does these things. All right, it says here that I have, I have paused. When the archers back, he gained altitude. When the archers back, he gained altitude. When the archers back, he gained altitude. When he pushes his shoulders forward, he goes into a dive. As you can see, there are three things, and uh, you only have to choose two. And because there was a little confusion, what I'm going to do is play it one more time. So, what happens when he arches his back, and what happens when he pushes his shoulders forward? So, let me go back one, and then here we go. When he arches his back, he gains altitude. When he pushes his shoulders forward, he goes into a dive. All right. Pretty easy, but you know, in case you need time, pause the video for the one you need. Now. Okay, so this was relatively easy, uh, I think. Uh, so we'll check your answers in. All right, so he arches his back. He flies up. He pushes his shoulders forward. He flies down. All right, so yeah, I'm just leaving this up there for double check, uh, checking. So it should be A, C, no B. All right, now you should be on page uh, 70, oh, still on page 72. All right, we're gonna watch part two of the talk, complete these notes. Um, I'm just going to read the question. What's flying like? What's his top speed? What is the weight of his equipment? How did he become Jetman? What's next for Jetman? It won't necessarily be in that order, but uh, those are the questions. You have the answers, what's missing? All right, for C, don't worry about C. As you can see, as you can see from C, uh, it is something to think about. All right, take a look at this, and we are now going to watch part two of the TED Talk. All right, in three, two, one. I don't have feathers, but uh, I feel like a bird sometimes. Uh, it was uh, about 20 years ago when I did discover free falling. 
about 300 kilometers per hour before looping. When I exit full of uh, kerosene, uh, I'm about 55 kilos. I have 55 kilos on my back. Uh, first to uh, instruct a younger guy, I want to, to share it, to do formation flights. All right, so as you can see, the answers are already there. Uh, but, you know, here it is. I usually tell you that you can pause the video for as long as you need, but if that was too fast, uh, I'll show you the answers in All right, so they, they were showing the answers as they were going along. But if it was too fast or I went too fast, I'll show them one more time. Okay, so what's his top speed? About 300 kilometers an hour. Uh, what's flying like? He said, it's fun. He feels like a bird. All right. So how did he become Jetman? Uh, he got the idea about 20 years ago when he discovered free falling. But as we're watching this, I'm, I think it was more than 20 years ago. Okay. And what's next uh, for Jetman? Uh, he wants to teach a younger guy, he wants to try taking off from a cliff. And what's the weight of his equipment? When his equipment is full of fuel, it weighs about 50 kilograms. All right, so I'm going to go away from this and back to the final presentations. This could be something, again, if you don't have an idea yet of what to do. You could talk about him, you know, exactly when did, you know, what was the year, right? Has he found someone to teach? Did he finally, was he finally able to take off from a cliff? You know, you know what's happening now? Was, you know, or was he able to do some of the things he wanted to do? All right, now they're gonna go back to the book. Now you have to go back, 71, page 71. All right, circle the correct answers to the question. And so the questions are, why does Rossi say it's like pure flying? What does Rossi mean when he says plan B, always a plan B? What does Rossi mean when he says, I hope it will be for everybody? All right. So you can take as much time as you need. Just pause the video now. All right. Uh, you have unpaused the video and you are ready to check your answers. So let's check your answers in. All right, so for number one, why does Rossi say it's like, uh, it's really pure flying? Because he controls his direction using only his body. What does Rossi mean when he says plan B? Always a plan B. It's important to have another option. It's important to have another plan if something doesn't work. That's plan B. Uh, what does Rossi mean when he says, I hope it will be for everybody? He hopes that everybody will be able to fly like him. 
All right, so we're going to stay on page 71. And as you can see on A, I'm not showing it, but if you have your book, you'll see that this is where those blue words from earlier are showing up. All right, I have them up on the top here um, in no order. And yeah, complete the summary using the words in blue from the passage, but the, the one that you listened to at the beginning. Uh, as far as critical thinking, again, when you see that emoji, I guess, yeah, that would be an emoji of somebody thinking, well, it's something to think about. Okay, so for A, you have as much time as you need Pause your video now. All right, so um, you have unpaused your video and you are ready to check your answers. Uh, just want to make sure here the words are parachute, engines, fuel, steer, and equipment. All right, we're going to check your answers in. All right, I will be reading these as we go along. Eve Rossi doesn't need much equipment when he flies. Remember, he only has two things. Uh, he uses his body to steer, to move right, to move left, to go up, to go down, steering. All right, and uses a parachute when he lands. I don't think I need to tell you what a parachute is. Okay, he carries enough fuel to fly for 10 minutes. His engines give him the speed to stay in the air. Okay, this is writing, so I'm gonna leave this up maybe 10, 15 seconds. If I was going too fast or you needed to change something. Okay, so now you should be getting ready for page 73, so 73. All right, just like uh, earlier, we did something. Um, I'm showing you the whole page and then I'm just going to show you the answers. Right, uh, but in this case, you don't see, uh, the words. This is for vocabulary and context. Uh, by the way, I still have the Zoom video off because as you can see, we're going to watch part of a TED talk. Uh, this will be the words and what do they mean? So at the end, I will show you one more time what the answers were from the video. But in the video, they're going to show you the words and then they're going to show you the answers. So right now, we're only doing vocabulary and context. Watch the ex excerpts from the TED Talk, choose the correct meaning of the words. That's all you're doing. Presentation skills and the others, that's going to be next. All right, so let's watch the video now. Many of the tests are conducted while Eve is strapped into the wing because Eve's body is an integral part of the aircraft.
When he arches his back, he gains altitude. He's out over the channel. Was he bossy? There is no turning back now. He is over the English Channel and underway. Ladies and gentlemen, a historic flight has begun. You don't have to pause your video. We're just going to I'm going to show you the answer. And All right, and you can see what the answers were. Uh, one, B, two, B, three, C, four, uh, all right, so I always show presentation skills whenever a unit has it because of the final speaking test. So gestures, movement of your body when you are talking uh, can be important when presenting to a group, even if you're just presenting to me, audience of one. These tips can help you use gestures effectively, the, basically the right way to get your message out. Keep your hands relaxed for most of the presentation. Make gestures large enough for your audience to see but remember, when you're doing it for the test, they don't have to be so big. Uh, and use gestures to make words and ideas easier to understand. For example, uh, I sometimes do it, you know, two and I show number two with my hands. Okay, so you're going to watch part of Rossi's talk. Check the things he does. Let me give you a hint. You, you have to check three things. There are three things he does. What are they? All right. Are you ready? And here we go. Because normally you have a big things around you. And uh, when I struck, just this little harness, this little wing. I've really the feeling to be a bird. Okay. Uh, this is just pausing the video for as long as you need for those three things. All right, let's go to the page in but now if you need to pause the video pause the video for as long as you need all right so you have unpaused the video and you are ready to check your answers, like I said, I gave you a hint. There are three. So what does he do? He uses his hands to show how big something is. He gestures with one hand to the equipment behind him. 
he uses his hand uh, to show how the harness goes around him. So if these were number one, two, three, four, you have to check number one, number two, and number four. I will leave this up. We're already past the 30 minute mark, I know. Uh, we have one last thing. Okay, here we go. Uh, you're going to watch a piece here. This is by Chris Burkhard. Burkhard? Anyways, what gesture does he make? Watch his hands. Basically, watch his hands. All right, here we go. About a third of the Earth's oceans that are warm, and it's really just that thin band around the equators. Okay. Don't worry about pausing the video. Let's go in. Okay, I'm just going to get right to it since we are past the 30 minute mark. Um, yeah, what he makes two gestures. Uh, the answers will vary. Something for you to think uh, think about. Don't worry about that. Uh, so. He uses his hands to make a gesture for a third. And he uses his hand to show a thin band around the equator. All right, let me turn the video back on. This is it. We're done with uh, the TED Talk. Hello, I'm back. The only thing I need to show you is that I'll see you guys in. Zoom. Yeah, that's it. Um, like I said, I'll see you guys in Zoom. Bye.